Okay, welcome to video 2 on PHP and MySQL and you will get a glance at PHP in this video but in fact the main point of this is to begin to set things up, get things correctly laid out. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen at the moment is the completed contact book. The best way of doing PHP is to have something to aim for and understand what we're going to do. Is Unlike HTML you can't really show just a single command, you need to show what the command can achieve. Um, this isn't a great contact sheet, but the very idea at the moment is that I have all my contacts in front of me, or two of them, and uh, I have a view contacts option, the menu, which takes me back to where I was. Um, I can enter, however, a, a new user, a user that's been stored in the database. I can click on login and I will get a whole new range of uh, selections. Notice the system recognizes who I am, gives me the option to log out. Along with view, I now have add contacts, and edit and option here and here. Um, for obvious uh, ways, edit does exactly what it says. I can edit the file here, click on save, and Mr. Mickey Mouse becomes Mr. Mick Mouse. Um, I can add a new contact if I wish to. That would allow me to enter Miss uh, Minnie Mouse. And I had already done this under a test, so her details are appearing on my system. But I'll plug that in, off the system goes, adds that to the database, and she now appears within my system. I can also, notice by the way, it's telling me the total number of contacts I've got. I can then click on Delete and it confirms to me, do I really wish to delete this? And the answer is, yes I do. That will take me back, completed, and I'm back to my original contact sheet. Now that exists within this folder here called test on my, uh, my system here. I'm running XAMPP, and I, if you watched the last video on the HTML, you'll know that XAMPP is a system which allows me to run a web server. I don't need it for HTML, but you have to have a web server system on your home computer to be able to run PHP. I did show you on there, download XAMPP, don't install it, but place it onto a drive area. The root of XAMPP, you will run... Um, XAMPP control, remember to run it as administrator. I've actually already got mine running, you can tell that because the page is there and it tells you here that my Apache and my SQL are running and you can see that because it says stop and stop there as well. So I've actually got mine running there and inside this is a folder called H of my websites reside within that area. There's the test and that's the one I was within previously. There are uh, several parts to this. There's the index.php file. You'll see this is PHP. Now, again, if you're paying attention with the HTML, you'll notice I was calling everything index.html or page.html. Here, I would now call it index.php. That tells the web server this is a PHP page and therefore it needs executing before it can be handed out as HTML. The other thing I've got is our good old fashioned folder with CSS and inside there is a CSS document. We'll have a look at that in a second. And last but not least is a pages folder where I have my add, delete, edit, a main and a nav. Now these may, may make no sense to you whatsoever. It doesn't matter. There are obvious ones there but it really does not matter at this stage because we're going to go through and build all of these. What I wanted to show you as well is another web page. Now this one's at localhost, that's what you need to type in. Once you've got XAMPP running, localhost, then the folder name. Mine was called test, so localhost slash test. And then it adds the index.php. Do notice, by the way, the index.php and simply press enter. It knows to load the index to PHP and it's there. The other document is within the same local host, but session underscore one. There are subtle differences. You'll notice that it's only got one point on there, and something causes, I've obviously got the name here, but if I log out, the system off it goes. It's now gone back to there, but you'll notice that whole top line jumps, and I've still got add contact, I've still got edit, I've still got delete. But notice with this, the view brings me back to this page. The add brings me back to this page. The edit brings me back to this page. The delete brings me back to this page. There is no login. This page goes nowhere. 
so though it looks the same it is not the same this data here does not come from a database it is, it is typed in so what we need to do first of all is have a look at what I mean by that so that's session one Now, it's important that I look at the Dreamweaver um, just from a coding coloring point of view. This index.php is the PHP. This is the entirety of the document. I'm showing you it now so you can see the PHP. At the top here is the HTML that we've seen in the first videos about HTML. But here we've got PHP and it runs from that red PHP marker there all the way down this page to this red one here. And then there's a bit of HTML, and then there's some more PHP, then that ends HTML, then lots more PHP, and so on. So this document it comprises of all the languages we've looked at, PHP, HTML, and just there is the CSS. If we look at the one I've got over here, you'll note that it's purely HTML. Now, what I recommend is you pause the video and you start typing that in. Once you've got all of that typed in, you'll have the beginnings of the page. I'm now going to scroll down and I'm going to show you the rest of it. There it is. So that's the whole of that HTML page. And you can see that in here, there is the reference to Mr. Mickey Mouse and everything else. It's not coming from a database, it's actually physically typed into this page. Add contacts up there, view contacts, everything else. So, what I've done is I've built a dummy page, and we're going to take this apart until we end up with the page that we saw earlier. The other document worth noting, and this is another trick with um, Dreamweave, is I can go to there, and this is the HTML. Again, start typing it in, pause the video, make sure you've got it exactly right, and then once you have, go down to here. Oops. If I stop about there, that should give you enough to pause, type some more in. And then last but not least, if I go right to the end, that's a lot of HTML. Sorry, CSS. Virtually there, capture those last few lines, and then the very last parts are those parts there. All of those will be used. I'm not going to alter this CSS. So that is the CSS from the finished document as much as it is for the first document. So be aware, though you've got all that, there is a lot of typing, you will not touch the CSS document again. But let's go back to the HTML. So we've got the HTML, look at the folder structure, I've called it index, I've saved it as PHP. So index.php. So if you are within any program, if it's Notepad, Notepad++, or in Dreamweaver, save it as index.php. The CSS file is still with CSS. I've called it addbook. And it's got a folder called CSS, so you do the same thing. Create a folder called pages, and in there we need three other documents. The add dot which looks like that. Now here's the relatively nice side. The delete document, oops, the edit document, let's jump to that one because that's the one that makes it the nice side, is that it's almost identical to the add. So actually if you simply copy over the code and all you've got to do is at the top it says add, change that to edit. At the bottom this says add contact. At the top it says save changes. So the add and the edit, really easy, very quick, pause the video, type it up, you're done. The last page in there is the delete page. And that looks just like that. Notice again, physically typed in that page. Now that allows me to run that on here, so you can see what it's going to look like. Now because they're inside a uh, folder, I've got folder slash add p. And that's going to look just like that. doesn't look like the contact form before because it's not connected to it. It's not using the CSS. There's no header information in there. It is a purely a form data. I can do the same thing with the edit. And there, you can see a very subtle change difference with the save changes from the other one. But it's virtually the same. And again, it's purely the form data. And then last, but in no way least, 
doesn't look the same because again it's not using the CSS and these go absolutely nowhere at the current moment in time they're just simply buttons so at the current moment in time we have a dummy site that that session a dummy site that goes nowhere a series of pages off of there that don't go nowhere but we are going to end up going back to this page which goes has a login has add edit delete or working and everything else fully PHP so we're going from a completely HTML to a full PHP or mixture of PHP and HTML document and we're going to do that over the next few sessions do run the HTML once you've got it does, does it look right? if it doesn't go through your code again it will look exactly the same I'm running Firefox it looks the same in Internet Explorer do run it make sure that it looks exactly the same before progressing to the next session because if your web page is not working at all there's a good chance your PHP will fail anyway that's the start you've been introduced to the pages hopefully talk to you in the next session